Welcome to another episode of Me and My Health Up. I'm your host, Anthony Harcher. I'm a clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist. The purpose of this podcast is to enhance and enlighten your well-being. And today, I'm going to be doing that for you. I'm going to be talking about the inconvenient truth about health. Yes, it's an un- usual sort of topic, uh, but it's sort of very profound once you hear me talk about it and then you realize the inconvenience around health. Um, So it's going to be covering topics such as we're going to be talking about like the ice bars, all these popular trends, these old traditional practices that have become very modern phenomena, popularity, and it's because the science is catching up to these traditional ways of being healthy, essentially. Uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, time-restricted feeding, or some people call it intermittent fasting. It's that 16 and 8 sort of diet or the 5 and 2 diet. We're going to be talking about nasal breathing. We're going to be talking about saunas. Uh, and we're going to be talking about just ways to be holistically healthy and ways to overcome this inconvenience of health. So let me get into the topic. So if we think about it, when we go to create new habits, there's an element of inconvenience about going to create that new healthy habit, uh, such as you want to go and uh, do more exercise, essentially. Well, you've got to find the space in your calendar. You've got to then um, actually go to a location and do it. Uh, you need to find some inspiration uh, to do that exercise. Uh, you may not want to do it. Um, and there's an element of ease about convenience, i.e. not doing exercise, isn't there? Lying in bed, sleeping in, not getting up. Uh, you know, to do the exercise, it requires a bit of effort. And with anything change around health, creating a new habit requires some element of habit. And with habits, uh, you know, it's hard to break old habits and then you need to create the new habit, uh, which requires this element of inconvenience because you've got to change your old ways of doing things, such as making time to exercise, uh, finding the time to eat healthy rather than the ease of convenience of takeaway. So cooking versus takeaway. There's an element you may perceive. And again, this is all perceptions around inconvenience because it can be convenient in many ways, depending on the way you look at it. And I'll certainly explain this perception that people may have, for example, around exercise. So the perception they may have with exercise is that it needs to be vigorous. It needs to be, you need to be out of breath. Uh, you need to do a certain amount of time. You know, it needs to be an hour workout. Otherwise, it's, again, this is all perceptions based on what other people are doing or what you may have read a, a, a headline in a newspaper article that said that uh, so many minutes at this intensity will help with weight loss. And so, again, it's all these accumulated perceptions over time uh, through what our friends are doing or what we've heard about, what we've read. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. <laughs> so it's it's important that you really uh, look at it objectively as opposed to just that perce- perception around exercise. So, um you know, there's a formal definition around exercise and then there's recommendations around exercise. But the most important thing to do is actually to start. And it can be, I always recommend to start small rather than go full on into it uh, because that can be very hard to sustain. Whereas it's very easy to find a small amount of time and to fit it in. And what I'm talking about is this whole thing of, when there's a choice between taking the escalator or walking up the stairs, then walk up the stairs. That's exercise, okay? And the more you sort of look for these opportunities in your day, such as, can I walk to this meeting or take an Uber? You know, do I? can I actually, you know, and then you might think, oh, productivity, it's more productive to jump in an Uber to get to the meeting. But you might also wanting to be upskilling in a certain area or learn more about something else. And so therefore, 
It could take a half an hour walk to get to that meeting, but you could be listening to a podcast or listening to a webinar that would also be upskilling you during that walk <laughs> to that meeting. Uh, or you could just take that 30 minutes to really reflect on what you want to get out of that meeting and prepare yourself mentally for that meeting. So therefore, it's productive. Um, then you might be saying, oh, but I could squeeze something else in. But then you might be limiting your productivity by trying to do too much um, and then not do everything really well. Uh, so it can be a, a matter of actually pulling back a bit and doing things really well that ends up increasing your productivity. So with the exercise, it is around just finding little bits of time to uh, do something, move the body essentially. And it could be whilst you're watching TV, you could decide to, in the ad breaks, do some squats or in between the Netflix rolling from one episode to another, is actually say in between episodes, I'm going to do a minute of squats or a minute of push-ups or a minute of sit-ups. And so therefore you're adding, this is gonna be all accumulatively. All these little bits are all gonna add up in your day to then you've found, you've automatically done 30 minutes of exercise, which is what is recommended, <laughs> for example. Um, or you might not get to 30 minutes, but 20 minutes or 15 minutes is better than nothing thinking that you need to find an hour in your day to exercise properly in terms of what you perceive as proper exercise. So what I really want to say is you can make it convenient rather than perceive it as an inconvenient task by breaking it down into smaller incremental bits or bites. And it's the same as, you know, I mentioned the time restrictive feeding, like 16 and eight, got to do 16 and eight. Well, the evidence between like, so what is 16 and eight? So it's 16 hours of resting your digestive system, i.e. not fasting. And then the other eight hours is your eating window, right? And that's, you know, there's a lot of research coming out in the 16 and eight and its benefits. There's certainly health benefits to it. However, starting out, you might find it difficult to do 16 and eight. So why not start at 12? Um, and do 12 and 12 and then incrementally build up to the 16 and 8. Or you might find that you, your sweet spot is 14 and 10 so that you're resting your digestive system, fasting for 14 hours and then eating within a 10-hour time window. That may be your sweet spot, okay? Because as you know, the research is done on a certain population, uh, which may be irrelevant to, to you in terms of your age bracket, your health goals. Uh, and yeah, so it, it, you just need to, uh, I guess, find what works for you essentially. And there you can make it convenient. Uh, so by having flexibility around uh, time restrictive feeding, will enable you to socialize better. So if you're strict around this 16 and eight, it can become very antisocial if you're invited to a brunch and typically you don't eat before 12 p.m. Then you're gonna go and everyone else is eating and enjoying the meal and it looks great and you're starving yourself sipping on your water. I mean, is that healthy, really? It's you know quite restrictive, it's not social. And so you've really got to look at things holistically and uh, and make things convenient for you. And you'll find the more you look for the convenience, you'll find it. It's just like thinking that everything healthy is inconvenient. Like, I don't want to have a cold shower. Like, so this whole hot, cold contrast therapy, it's sort of where the ice baths get to. It's essentially being exposed to cold, uh, being exposed to cold, uh, or certainly the contrast between cold and hot has been shown to improve our circulation. And so that can be good for detoxification. It can be good for healing, recovery. It can be really good to, um, I guess, de-stress in a sense. Uh, so it sort of, it does, it shocks the body. Uh, the body needs to respond and it can get out of that stuck state. So it can be helpful in terms of relaxate, you know, relaxing, uh, can be helpful for, you know, exposure to cold 
also helps with increasing our brown fat. So our brown fat is our good fat, just like we have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. We like to label things, don't we? Our brown fat is uh, contains mitochondria. And so mitochondria are essentially a, like a powerhouse um, that produces energy. And so it needs to consume it. So this brown fat is consuming calories essentially to keep you warm. So uh, babies have a lot of brown fat because they're essentially at a young age, they, their body can't shiver. And that's, you know, as we get older, our body can, the muscles, we have muscles that can um, shiver and produce heat, right? Uh, so thermogenesis, we can create heat. Uh, but we also have this brown fat, certainly around our neck and our upper body uh, where our vital organs are such as our heart and our lungs and uh, we can increase the ratio of white fat to brown fat by having exposure to cold now this is the whole thing we we want to be conveniently warm all the time so we go from air conditioning to air conditioning and uh, we go from a house that is air conditioned or is heated and then we jump into a car that's heated then we go to an office that's heated and so our body doesn't actually experience these contrasts, whereas, you know, from a primitive sense, you know, in terms of where we come from, we were exposed to the elements all the time and our body was constantly having to adjust and generate heat. And when you generate heat, when your body has to generate heat, it is burning calories. And so it's actually good to have some exposure to cold. And it doesn't need to be extreme. You don't need to jump into an ice bath. If we talk about starting incrementally small and making it more convenient as opposed to inconvenient, i.e. having to fill a tub with ice and then add some water and then jump in it, you know, that, that there's, there's a quite a degree or increased degree of inconvenience, but we can find ease in health by starting small. And that can be just going for a brisk walk at a colder part of the day with less on, so less less layers essentially, right? So therefore we are exposed to cold. Our body is feeling it. It needs to adapt. It needs to generate some heat. And it, and so it is good to be cold for certain periods of time, obviously not extended periods of time and become hypothermic. So, you know, these short periods such as a half an hour walk, uh, you know, exposure to the cold is going to be helpful um, and it's not going to be too inconvenient. There's always an element of perceived inconvenience because you have to make effort, right? It's it's a whole lot easier to stay warm, layer up, and to be cosy. And so there's that always going to be that element of a little bit of inconvenience. You've got to make some effort in order to create change. If you want to create healthy change, effort is required, and there's going to be an element of discomfort. So... Yeah, that's the the hot cold. I, I've been doing uh, five degree uh, ice bath, so to speak. Well, not ice bath, but it's a five degree bath essentially, uh, and then contrasting that, jumping from that, you know, for a period of time, I've been doing around five six minutes into a hot bath, which is somewhere between thirty five and forty two degrees, and I've really found that applying that contrast therapy at least once a week has really helped, it, it relaxes me actually. I find it very relaxing and I feel great afterwards. I mean, I do feel cold because my core body temperature has dropped, but there's an element of feeling more mentally alert, more clarity. And I think it's, you know, it's that really improve that increased circulation that your body's experienced, that um, parasympathetic state's been switched on uh, so that, the body has been doing some more digestion. I always feel that I'm making lots of digestive sounds when I'm doing this therapy. And yeah, my mind just really slows down. It does. It slows you know, the heart rates. It really slows your breathing down. Uh, so that can be really good to do that for a period given our lives are so busy. We generally have an elevated heart rate. We um, don't have great circulation because we're so stressed and all our the blood supplies around our vital organs as opposed to getting out to the extremities. Um, and if you're not exercising, then it's really not getting out to the extremities. So, uh, you know, we can have 
obviously pooling of waste products produced by our soils in these areas and you know you get swelling you get um you don't get good uh, thermal control of these areas uh and so you know in order to reduce that swelling to you know help the body detoxify get out the toxins we need to get that circulation through exercise and hot and cold therapy can be one way of doing that as well and the other one that I also came across um, on a podcast I did with uh, Paul Poulos and we spoke about lifestyle optimization hacks. He mentioned nasal breathing and he's found it's really helped with his condition of narcolepsy. Uh, so narcolepsy is a really extreme condition where uh, sleep is really challenged to the extreme and he's had to find ways to improve his sleep and one of the ways is through nasal breathing. And so... I uh, was listening to his talking about nasal breathing and the importance and and I've since read a book on nasal breathing and really understand it, understood, well, you know, started to get an understanding of how we've ended up predominantly being mouth breathers and how we're not designed to mouth breathe. We're actually designed to breathe through our nasal passage and the benefits are huge uh, actually utilizing the nasal passage uh, for breathing. Uh, so, uh, you know, in terms of what I've found um, through the practice of nasal breathing is my heart rate is lowered and certainly the science supports lowered heart rate, lowered blood pressure. I'm sleeping better at night. That's a big one. More energized. And, yeah, I feel more alert uh, during the day. So, Nasal breathing, good practice that I'm applying every night at the moment. I've done it for about a week is I'm taping my mouth and uh, it forces me to breathe through my nose. Uncomfortable to begin with. Again, there's an element of inconvenience, an element of lack of ease, but I thought I'd give it a go. And I've tried it one night and, 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 and you, you got to stick with it. You got to be consistent with any change. Uh, in order to reap the benefits. Uh, so I did start seeing benefits within the first few days and probably encouraged me to keep going. But I've now beyond seven days of taping my mouth at night. Now I don't really notice the inconvenience of taping the mouth. <laughs> Initially, the first it was really horrible to begin with. But uh, now I'm just in the routine of doing it. And, and I'm finding just my sleep's really improved. I and getting better in terms of, you know, I'm not a 100% nasal breather at the moment because um, I've, I've had a cold, so <laughs> it makes it harder. But um, I'm certainly getting more uh, into my conscious thinking of needing to, you know, constantly switch back to nasal breathing. And again, with any change of behavior, it is, it, it, you'll switch back to autopilot, which is your subconscious way of what you did previously. And you need to you know, obviously bring it to your conscious mind of, oh, I've kind of slipped back into um, mouth breathing. So uh, get back to nasal breathing. And it's the same with creating any new habit is you will have elements where you slip back to the old, but it's just getting back on track. And that's the most important thing is getting back on track as soon as possible. And so the other point about this, the inconvenient truth around health is that in time it becomes with ease because it becomes habitual we and we start realizing the benefits and it reinforces that behavior and wanting to keep doing it so nasal breathing is something i want to keep at right i've only seven days in i'm not there yet and i realize you know it can take anywhere up to a month uh to break an old habit or to create a new one and so i'm willing to stick with it because i'm seeing the benefits i'm feeling the benefits and so it's really important to stick with change. But again, back to it, make it less inconvenient by starting small, small increments. Uh, so you could just do, you know, it, like you could do a, a maybe a practice during the day where you tape your mouth for 20 minutes and then just practice, you know, 20 minutes. And, and you might that, that might be an easier way to start. And that 20 minute practice can be your mindfulness time because you're focused on nasal breathing. And that's a form of mindfulness is where we just draw our attention to the breath. And that's what you will be doing, focusing on nasal breathing. You won't have the ability to <laughs> um, breathe through the mouth because it's tapes. So 
Yeah, so just start small and, you know, by taping your – it may be just too hard to comprehend this whole taping my mouth for a tire night is just too difficult and worrying about, oh, what happens if I stop breathing <laughs> and all that sort of things and, and those sort of thoughts could come uh, into your thinking. But uh, certainly um, your, your, your body does uh, – know that it can breathe through the nose and so it will when it has to right um yeah so that that i found yeah just starting small i mean i was able to go straight into it but you know you might need to start smaller with some maybe some daytime practices uh, or it could be you just close your mouth and be focus on the mouth closed and focus on breathing through the nose you don't need to tape your mouth so to speak so that can you know be a, another great practice what else i've uh We've been trying out saunas, and again, with the saunas, it's finding the time. It's uh, then sticking with it because it, it, you do you feel quite agitated when your body gets really hot and it's trying to cool itself and is struggling to cool itself. And again, it's sort of sticking through this element of inconvenience in order to get to the benefits. Uh, but if you focus on, uh, I guess the experience and what you're feeling as opposed to focusing your attention to the inconvenience and the hardship, then that can make it easier as well. So it can bring a much, much more ease to what you're applying. And that's what I found with being in the five degree pool was if I just focused on my breathing or just focused on what my body's feeling as opposed to you know, watching the clock count down um, or just notice that my mind slowed down and how great it is when your mind slows down and it's not racing. And, and yeah, so really connecting with your senses, really em embracing the moment, I find it can really lessen the, the hardship or the inconvenience of that healthy change. And that's what I found with saunas was just really sitting through that moments or moments or minutes of discomfort and your body does find a way to, you know, to sort of find some balance <laughs> with the uh, with the change, and so you'll start sweating, obviously. And uh, once you find your breakout with sweat, then you find it's a bit easier. Then it gets inconvenient again. But again, it's just a matter of um, going at your own pace, listening to your body, but sitting with it for a period and not just giving up. And I think it's the same with you know time restricted feeding is initially you'll find it a bit challenging and you'll get hungry and you'll think, I really want to eat. But if you then just focus on a task that you really enjoy, it will take your mind off how your stomach's feeling. And certainly I've been reading another book on longevity and you know that, that element of feeling hungry is actually good for us, obviously not for over extended periods of time and we're starving ourselves, but certainly elements of the day of sitting with hunger is really good it actually switches on our longevity genes uh, really good for longevity to have these periods of feeling hungry and just the more you do it the fine i find it 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 doesn't become uncomfortable uh we're just so used to being always um chasing pleasure in terms of feeling at ease and you know why we shouldn't have any struggle but if you accept the struggle uh, as part of, you know, complementary opposites with pleasure. And Dr. Martini also spoke about this on a more recent episode of Me and My Health Up, is we have these complementary opposites and they exist in, in, in everything. We, we can't avoid them. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere, such as, you know, sad and happy, pain and pleasure. Uh, there's opposites with everything we do you know hardship and ease or you know the convenience ease versus inconvenience and hardship there's always a complementary opposite just like a magnet always has a north and south pole there's always opposites and the more we embrace that these opposites in life and not just seeking one side one-sided and thinking that life is just one-sided, it's just all, it should always be pleasure, then we're only going to let ourselves down because <laughs> we can't have pleasure without pain. I mean, how can, how can, there's, there's no relativity um, if, if we don't, you know, know what 
pleasure is if we haven't had some sort of suffering. Um, it's the same as happiness. Uh, if you don't have moments of feeling down, then how do you know you're actually happy? <laughs> you know, if you're permanently happy, then that would, that would be bore, boring <laughs> because it would just be normal. Um, it's the cycles that we, we enjoy and that this, you know, it's the cycles of life. Um, so yeah, embracing that that's yeah there's two sides to everything is also something that i've learned recently and i've really got into dr john d martini's work around uh his method and way of um training the mind to think more objectively as opposed to subjectively and work in that higher level of thinking which is in that prefrontal cortex our executive function of the brain versus in that primitive amygdala which is that more instinctual, impulsive, um, primal uh, center, which is our fight or flight or freeze center in terms of uh, what we may do as a result of that being switched on. And typically, you know, if you look around, we, we live too much into that primal area of the brain, that system one, that black or white thinking, that... Um, prey predator impulse instincts and as opposed to then getting out of that and into the higher level of thinking which is looking at things more objectively and looking at things as being balanced and dr martini refers to that higher level of thinking as the gratitude center that prefrontal cortex if we uh, operate more into that level of thinking we have a more balanced perspective on life and we can be more grateful for everything in our life. Otherwise, we can't be grateful because we're, if we're always looking for pleasure, there's always some pain somewhere around it. And, and he, he mentions that uh, it's meant to be that way uh, because everything's perfectly balanced. Uh, the yin and the yang is an Eastern philosophy and uh, the that Eastern philosophy of yin and yang is that there's always yin within yang and yang within yin. <laughs> and it's in the dynamic state. It's in a constant moving state of flux. Uh, so it's always changing between yin and yang, night and day, cold, hot. <laughs> and so uh, these complementary opposites exist all around us uh, in our environment and uh, in our emotions uh, and in our actions. And so yeah, we need to embrace both sides of life, both sides of ourselves, uh, and there's more fulfillment in that. So, yeah, if you want more, certainly go to the episode with Dr. D. Martini, episode 111, and that was a great episode where we talk about these complementary opposites and em embracing both sides of life. And it's essentially he talks about how to rewire your brain uh, to a healthy mindset, uh, which is what I'm... Uh, assisting to do in this episode is essentially helping you find more convenience in the supposedly inconvenience healthy ways of living <laughs> so I, I just want to finish off on uh, cooking and takeaway food is another one where i see a lot of people uh, just going for that ease of convenience because it's quick easy there's no washing up no cleaning uh, and there's just only difficulty and more effort required to uh, cook and obviously with cooking you got the preparing um, the whole thing of washing up afterwards but you can make this an experience and as I said before embracing the experience as opposed to seeing as as a, a means to an end uh, so if we're always looking for the finish line we're going to miss the journey and life's all about the journey. If we were just interested in the finishing line, that's us in a grave. Um, that's the, the finish line. So uh, we need to embrace the journey. And so you could really embrace the cooking experience by making it a family experience. If you have a family, getting everyone involved, everyone set a task and, and working together as a team to create something special and, you know, bringing uh, creativity, bring in uh, new recipes, new ideas, have theme nights such as new cultures and you can really make it fun by taking away the perception of it's just um, difficult and requires more effort. Uh, you can really embrace that 
experience so it's bonding so you know you can tick many boxes uh you bond the family you, you know you could do it with flatmates you bring your flatmates together uh you say this have a theme night let's uh you know it could be an italian night and you really embrace the italian culture you might watch an italian movie you cook some italian food um drink some italian wine or whatever but you can really make it fun and it it doesn't need to be seen as inconvenient because that whole element of embracing the experience is that you're bringing in other elements of wellness uh, you've got social connection you've got working together as a team to a common goal which really bonds people together you've got uh, you're creating the food cooking it so you know what goes in it it's not just cheap ingredients and uh, you know, lots of fats and salts and sugars. Uh, you can really control what goes in it. And uh, you can brace, embrace your area of creativity. And, you know, you can challenge yourself in terms of um, coming up with creative uh, new recipes that you like. <laughs> um, so, and you can also try new different foods. So the other challenge I give my clients is to buy a new vegetable, uh, bring that new vegetable home and create a meal around it. It's like the box challenge that you you see on MasterChef is challenge yourself with something new. It could be a new cut of meat. It could be a different type of meat. It could be a different type of vegetable. It could be a different type of grain and then create something around it. Uh, so engage that high level of thinking, that creative center of your brain, that executive area as opposed to the impulsive amygdala, which is that ease, convenience, all pleasure, and uh, seeking, you know, takeaway. And uh, we, we know takeaway food, pro heavily processed food, is not great for us. And so if we see the cooking experience as a fun experience, as opposed to an inconvenience, and I mentioned at the start of this episode, it, it's all based on perception, uh, because you can make it a really convenient experience such that you're having fun you're socializing you're eating healthily uh together uh you're having some laughs you, you you the meal will sit really well because you're embracing the whole experience so you're you switch on your parasympathetic state which is your rest and digest state and so you digest that food you feel great afterwards and you've had fun and so it can be just doing this a couple of times a week or, you know, and that's better than not doing it at all um, or just seeing every meal as such an inconvenience. I just don't have the time. Well, make it a fun experience and you're always looking for more happiness and fun. Uh, so really embrace it. See it in, in another perspective. And I'm hoping you've got that perspective from me, from what I've just shared. So that's really what I really wanted to share today is that, Yes, health or making healthy changes can be perceived as inconvenient. And there, there is obviously an element of inconvenience because it's a change of routine. But that change, if you make it small, can be a, an easy way to ease into it and then allow it to grow, incrementally build on that change. So as I mentioned in terms of, uh, you know, those sort of, incidental chances of doing exercise throughout the day, embracing them, doing more of that uh, and building on that. And then you'll start to feel the benefits and then you'll want to do it more. And then it just becomes uh, something that you perceive so much benefit from that it becomes part of what you do. It becomes part of your identity and it becomes easier to do. And so I you know, regularly do these ice baths at least once a week. You know, I'm regularly doing sauna at least once a week. I regularly embrace uh, different types of exercises, you know, resistance training, cardio training, uh, more stretching um, and, uh, you know, mobility training. Uh, so I have that good mix throughout the week. I do it the way I like doing it. And again, you need to experiment and explore and find what resonates for you and your body and your goals. Again, it, you know, what works for me um, you're completely unique and different. So don't think, you know, I, I need to try it because Anthony says so. Anthony's just sharing health principles to to get you to think more healthy and to act and do more healthier things as and and, and see it as a 
I guess, a shift in paradigm in terms of the way you see it. So I hope that was helpful. Um, and I really appreciate you tuning in each week for another episode of Me and My Health Up. I've got some great up and coming episodes. So uh, continue to stay tuned in. Please provide feedback. Please share the episode with others that you think could benefit uh, from this information that's struggling, you know, that person that may be struggling to get started or always sees help being healthy as inconvenient or a struggle. Uh, this shift of perspective may help them. So, yeah, please share it with them. Leave a review. That will really help it get out to more people. And uh, join the Me and My Health Up tribe on Facebook. I, I'll have the link in the show notes. So go and join the tribe. I'll share healthy tips and advice and updates as to what's dropping and even previews of what's dropping ahead of time. So, uh, yeah, really appreciate you tuning in. So thank you.